it's not going to be impossible. In fact, it's going to be quite easy. So I'm going to lasso select those. I'm just going to grow my selection here using shift up arrow and shift down arrow to contract a little bit. And what I'm going to do is hold down the control key and I just want a nice wide selection around the ear. Okay, and that's going to represent the actual brush that we create. Okay, and that's probably going to be enough. I probably don't need that row right there. Okay, so that is going to be the geometry we use for the brush. Now, how to create it? Well, we just go to Utilities, choose Geometry to Brush. And in this case, we don't want a height field. We want a vector displacement map. Okay, a height field would just be a grayscale. We want a vector displacement because we need to get the overlapping detail here. We want this to be about 1K, nice plenty of fidelity in the image. And we'll go on the x-axis to project through the head and we'll say OK. And now look at that. We've got this nice uh, rainbow, rainbow of fruit flavors. All right, that is the ear. We're going to call that ear three. And that's the brush. Now, how do we use it? So let's go back over here. We're going to close all. Very good. And let's just do something easy that you can see quite clearly. We'll go ahead and crank up the uh, subdivision level on the sphere there. And we need to do image-based sculpting here. So we're going to add a displacement texture. We'll call this uh, ear ball two. All right, and let's go with 2K. Should be plenty. And that's going to create the image and save it to disk. And at the same time, it's going to apply it as a vector displacement map because we chose add displacement texture. And again, the vector displacement allows us to do this arbitrary 3D displacement that we can see if we go ahead and look in the uh, shader tree here in the effect column, you'll see vector displacement right there. Okay, so now what we want to do is go back to our sculpt tools, choose emboss. Emboss uses a preset image. So the preset image here we want is the ear. And that's the one I did earlier. Let's go ahead and just uh, in the interest of full disclosure, here's ear three that I just did for you. And now we simply right click to set the resolution of the brush. We want the ear to be about that big. And here. And then all we do is we click and start to drag, and that's going to add that ear to the mesh. Okay, so there we go. Whoop. How about one over here? Good, good. I like it. Now, what you're seeing, of course, there's a little bit of distortion uh, on the edge where the selection ends, but that's not a problem because, again, we just go ahead and grab our regular sculpting tools. You see the distortion here. Let's go and zoom into that a little bit. Uh, set our brush and then hold down shift and that just smooths that right out. So I could create my brush a little more wisely, but the smooth tool allows me to go in there and correct any of that. Really useful. Another cool tool to work with when working with uh, image-based sculpt data is the, um, excuse me, the attenuate control. And what attenuate does is it just um, reduces the amount of vector displacement. So as I'm painting this in here, you see it's sort of just undoing the ear, almost like it's melting back down to its original state. So the attenuate is a very cool function to use when working with geometry to brush and vector displacement. Some really cool stuff. Of course, there's a ton of other uh, functions in here. Won't have time to get to all of them, but that should give you a little taste of image-based sculpting. Ah, as I mentioned earlier, since this is uh, image-based, uh, you can come in here and these can be uh, layered. You can, of course, disable them, enable them. We can also change the opacity. So you can set it to 50% displaced, say 100% displaced.